Hello, this is John from New England Prepper Society, and today I'm going to convince you why the Mini 14 is King of the Hill and SHTF. Before I get into the Mini 14, I do want to go into the history behind it, so that way you learn a little bit about it, and hopefully it earns your respect by the time I'm done telling you some history. In 1967, Sullivan and Ruger began the process of shrinking the M14 762 service rifle into a more compact version chambered in 223 Remington. The project took six years, culminating in 1973 with the Mini 14. Mass production began in 1974. Bill Ruger should need no introduction, but just to bring you up to speed, he was a marketing genius and one of the founders of Stern Ruger & Co. He and his design teams brought us the Standard Auto, Single 6, 1022, and many other firearms. Leroy J. Sullivan was born on June 27, 1933 in Nome, Alaska. Sullivan lived in Nome until he was about seven years old. Concerned that World War II would spread to Alaska, Sullivan's family moved to Seattle, Washington. Sullivan served in the U.S. Army from 1953 to 1955. Although he was trained by the Army to be a telephone installer and repairman, due to his civilian training, he went overseas to Korea in 1954, where he was assigned by the Army to be a diver to repair oil pipelines and other facilities damaged during the U.S. invasion of Incan Harbor. Sullivan is largely responsible for the Ultimax 100 light machine gun, the Surefire MGX. He also contributed to the Ruger M77 rifle, M16, Stoner 63, and Ruger Mini 14 rifles. For a period of time, the Ruger held one distinct advantage. It didn't look like the rifle that most Americans had only seen in newsreels from the Vietnam War, nor was it plagued with rumors of unreliability. It had a classic look that didn't allude to America's involvement in what was an unpopular war. Despite its roots and military designs, it was not the extreme looking black rifle carried by soldiers and marines overseas and therefore it appealed to civilians, police departments, and correctional institutions that sought the firepower available for either platform but like the tried and true grand style action and a classic wooden steel look. These were the days before American cities had SWAT teams. They were the days where patrolmen wore dress shoes and carried a six shot revolver. The idea of the police having a shootout with heavily armed gunmen was a considered by, far-fetched by the average person. Even so, many departments stocked their armory with many 14s. The logical next question is what's my point with all this information? Well, I personally think that the Mini 14 is the king of the hill. Now, what I'm not saying is the Mini 14 is better than the M4 or AR-15. Please. Don't misconstrue what I'm saying. Don't go into my comments and start attacking me based off this premise. What I am saying is that there are reasons why you would pick a Mini 14 over an AR-15, which don't necessarily make it better, but make it a good choice. The first reason, it's a fixed gas piston. It's a cleaner system. Uh, you can put a folding stock on it. I know you can do the same with an AR-15, but it, you have those options. And you know you're coming in at about a thousand dollars for folding stock. It shoots semi-automatically. I just made that word up, probably. Uh, two two three slash five five six. It's a piston system. You can get piston systems and piston uppers. Um, I think like a T ninety one it might be like the Korean uh, or a Taiwanese uh, upper. But you know there's there's affordable piston uppers out there. But I just tend to think that the Mini 14 American made is the better option for an affordable piston 223556. Of course, you can get into the HK world. You can get into the SIG world with piston. You're going to just be paying through the nose. Second thing, you know, fewer vibrations. Like if you don't know what a piston system is, basically it's it's the way that the gas is funneled through the action. Um, it's in a nutshell less vibrations less moving parts and so you're going to be a little bit more accurate there's a there's a bad taste out there for people saying that the mini 14 is inaccurate and paul harrell did a good write-up on that he actually proved that most people who say the mini 14 is not accurate they were used to shooting the ar-15 sights the the old school sights the one that looks like a triangle at the at the muzzle and then you have like the uh, the laptop handle on top of the old and this is reason number three is the trigger on the Mini 14 is excellent. Now you can actually go out there and modify the trigger, 
But you know, if you're doing any type of precision shooting, or if you're if you're trying to touch 250 yards, 300 yards, having a good trigger does make a difference. That Mini 14 comes stock with a good trigger. Now, to your point, you can put a better trigger on a Geisy trigger on an AR-15, but that's about $300, $400, right? So there are options. You can make an AR-15 better than a Mini 14. I'm not going to say you can't, but it's going to cost a hell of a lot more money. You know, the fourth reason, it's a low-profile weapon. The ranch version of the rifle, you get that wood stock with the metal. I've done it. I walk around Maine with the ranch rifle on my back. My neighbors typically don't have a, pro a problem with firearms anyway, but it's less intimidating. It gets the job done. My fifth reason why I believe Ruger Mini 14 is a king of the hill is the ability to shoot 762 by 39 out of it. Now, these are for people who I have a 300 blackout video. Some people hate it. Some people love it. They say 300 blackouts too expensive. If you were if you were an SKS guy and you like the SKS, the SKS rifle is now it's military surplus. It's an old Russian gun that shot 7.62 by 39 with a fixed mag. Some of them had detachable mags, very hard to get. That SKS is now almost a thousand dollars. It's military surplus. The gun is probably 50, 60 years right now, old. So if you like the SKS, you like the wood and steel look, and you like the ability to shoot some cheap surplus 7.62 Russian ammo, the Mini 14 does that for you. And it, in my opinion, it does it the best. Now I live in Connecticut. The gun laws here are absolutely unconstitutional. You can't own an AK-47 with a 7.62 round. You can only own pre-banned AK-47s with the with um, 223, 556 capability. So in an unfree state like the state I live in, the Mini 14 is going to be the best sled for the 7.62 by 39. Um, it's an intermediate. For those who don't know what that AK-47 round is, is the intermediate cartridge. Um, it is a 30 caliber round. You can use it for hunting in this state or many states. So you know to me that's what makes the mini 14 a versatile weapon a versatile platform it does give you the 30 caliber options you have your old 556 options and just to sum up what i'm trying to say it's a great option if you don't want an ar-15 platform the mini 14 is king of the hill and these are five reasons why i think you should pick mini 14 and shtf